Before we um, look at a few problems at the end of this chapter, I want to uh, talk about a little story about uh, uh, something called Total Quality Management, or TQM. And there may be a few of you who have heard of this before. After the World War II, the um, United States and its allies decided to do something a lot different, something that um, I don't know has ever been done before. We decided to help rebuild our, um, the enemies, help our enemies rebuild their countries. Well, over in Japan, General MacArthur uh, was de facto ruler of Japan for a while, and he uh, made sure that they crafted a constitution which would diminish Japan's uh, ability and inclination to wage war. And, um, but he also brought over um, several thousand Americans to help Japan rebuild itself and, um, and to teach them um, better ways of doing things. Well, uh, one of these people that got sent over to Japan was a little-known statistician from some university. His name was W. Edwards Deming. And Deming had his own thoughts and philosophies about how statistics could be used in the manufacturing process. He also had uh, some management theories. He had uh, 14 points, principles of management, which uh, are, are still taught to this day, and, and uh, it's basically a lot of common sense. Um, for example, if um, you know, decisions should be made by the people closest to the activity around which the decision is being made. For example, uh, you don't want someone in a head office making a decision on how to run a machine down on the shop floor. You need the people down there who actually run those, that machinery to make decisions about the machinery. It's common sense stuff like this. Well, anyway, Deming's also used a lot of statistics. And, and the goal was to oversee a, a manufacturing operation and monitor it in order to improve the quality of the operation. Now, um, Americans, traditionally, their method of, of producing was just to uh, produce like crazy. We could outproduce anybody in the world. We'd let those machines run in our factories, produce the heck out of things, and when a machine broke down, then we fixed them. Otherwise, we just ran, ran things until machines broke down. Well, uh, Deming had a different idea. He said, look, when, if, you, uh, if you look at your manufacturing operation and you find that some of the parts coming out are out of tolerance, then um, as, uh, as these... Um, you know, if you continue, the machine is starting to wear out. Something inside is wearing out. When things start to go out of tolerance a little too much, then you're going to start losing quality. You're going to start producing defectives, defective products. Well, it was a pretty novel idea for its day, and um, it, it caught on very well in Japan, and, and, and to this day, Deming is very revered over there. Uh, matter of fact, they have a prize over there for... Um, the company that best implements the philosophies of total quality management. This prize is open to anyone in the world, so actually uh, an American company, American Power and Light, won it one year back in the 80s, as I understand it. But anyway, um, the, the results worked out very well because uh, in time, and after you know, several decades, the Japanese and, um, and, and other Asian countries, as it caught on, um, really became renowned for high quality products. So now that's different. When I was a kid, made in Japan uh, was almost a joke. You know, the products were kind of tinny, not, not very good, but, but nowadays made in Japan is usually very well respected for, for quality. Well, in time that got the attention of us Americans and total quality management has made itself back into, uh, made its way back to America. And uh, many companies today have quality control operations and they use the principles uh, advocated by total quality management by, by Deming. And there are some other, other gurus of that movement um, also. He wasn't the only one, but he was one of the big names. Anyway, uh, so here, here's a story I like to tell. And, and I'm not sure quite how accurate it is. I, I heard it uh, about 20 years ago, and I thought it, was, uh, it kind of stuck with me. So the story was this. Some Japanese automakers came to the United States to, um, to tour one of the big three automakers. You know, we had Chrysler, Ford, and GM. And I don't recall, or I don't know which automaker it was, but uh, they visited the plant, and, uh, and one of the high-level executives, let's say it's Ford, um, said, well, let, let me give you a tour of our factory. I'll show you how we do things over here. 
So he's very proud, and he's walking these, these auto executives uh, down the floor. It's a very long, you know, those factories are humongous. They're very, very big buildings. So he's walking along the floor explaining the operations of the uh, of, of building cars there. And um, one of the Japanese auto executives notices that there's a barrel about every 50 feet. And so they walk along slowly, and you listen to them talk, and look over in the barrels. And uh, he kept looking at those barrels, and finally the, the American said, well, what, what interests you about those, those barrels? And the Japanese guy said, well, uh, what, what are they for? What, what's in them? And the American said, well, well, that's where we put our defectives. And the Japanese guy said, well, why do you make defectives? <laughs> so, uh, a new way of thinking. Um, <clears throat> anyway, the idea is that in uh, total quality management, part of this is to monitor your operation and use statistics to tell if, um, if things are, are being manufactured outside a certain range, outside a certain tolerance. And if it is, it indicates there's some sloppiness building up. And when you do that, then um, your, your operation may not be as efficient. You're going to start making more defective products. You're going to start losing quality. And so, um, now my, uh, my ex-father-in-law, used to run a grain bin factory in Iowa, one of the four largest grain bin factories in the United States. And uh, he, he bought into this total quality management some years ago. And he was always at odds with his, uh, one of the two owners of the company was, uh, was an accountant. And he's always at odds with this guy because uh, the accountant wanted to buy the cheapest stuff at the best prices, you know, the cheapest materials, the metal that they used to, to make these grain bins. And he was always getting it from different sources based on the best price he could get. Well, that's old style American thinking. Let's be very efficient in our, our purchasing. Let's get the best deals. And uh, my, my ex-father-in-law noticed and says, look, when you, when you keep doing that to us, um, you, you're, you're not consistent. The, the, the metal you were using, the, the products you were using are not consistent. And we're wasting a considerable amount, and, and the quality is not as good. So, um, in a total quality management thinking, you would buy um, higher quality materials, be consistent with it, and so you could have a consistent manufacturing operating, reduce waste, reduce you know time wasted because you've wasted some some of the manufacturing time uh, dealing with these materials. And, uh, and, of course, you, you build a higher quality product. So, anyway, um, i like to, uh, to say, you know, say a few things about total quality management. That is, is, to some extent, not just management principles. It's also based upon using statistics in order to search for quality. And, um, and consistency. And what is consistency? Consistency, here's my punchline, consistency is related to standard deviation. When your standard deviations are small, then you're much more consistent. And uh, now it's it's it could be impossible or very difficult or impractical to go for perfect consistency. But uh, I just heard uh, I, I think this might be true. I heard about it that the Ferrari Motor Company, when they make cars, I I know they they do not mass produce cars. They they have highly trained engineers and people who make these uh, Ferraris, um, they have zero tolerance. When they machine uh, a part, they, they machine it exact as they can. There's, there's really no slop at all. And because of that, that explains why their engines uh, run so well, they last so long. In fact, they're uh, so well made, you can almost run a Ferrari engine without oil. So, is that true? Well, I heard it. It made some sense to me. I'm not an expert at at Ferraris or, or motor engines, but but when the parts fit together perfectly, um, there's so little friction that uh, you don't need much lubrication, and the engine will last much longer and be far more efficient. So in that operation, they're looking for practically a zero standard deviation in their process, full consistency. And uh, so anyway, there's some ideas there related to statistics. Okay, well, I'm going to uh, go look for my book, and we'll uh, discuss a problem or two out of the book.